For over a quarter century, this red brick building was at the center of Aspen's changing scene, from the quiet years, through the first generation of ski bums, to our maturity as a cultural center. The Red Onion is dear to us because of one man. In 1949, Werner Kuster struck out for Aspen, anticipating the elegance of a five-star Swiss resort. What he did not know is that he would have to make the elegance happen. I was born in St. Gallen on the 30th of July, 1925. Shortly after that, my father moved down to Lake Constance and bought a hotel. The town was called Berlingen. It was a very small town, probably eight, nine hundred people. The specialties were fish from Lake Constance. We had always fresh fish brought in every day. We had a lot of local business at the hotel. His parents were meticulous and industrious. The hotel was a success. My father had a vineyard and he was famous for a good white Swiss wine called Silvander. He had a car, uh, a Fiat convertible. I started once the ignition and <laughs> he let me have it under hands. You know? My mother was a very hard-working woman. Things were tough when the war started. Things, everything was rationed. Werner helped out by raising geese, and for a time, his geese provided the only eggs the family could get. My father always wanted me to take over the hotel, and he wanted me to get the, the education in food. He sent me to cook school. At age 14, Werner apprenticed to a pastry chef for three years. Then he went to work in the best hotel kitchens in Switzerland, and also served in the Swiss Army. Baker's Division. While working in San Moritz, he raced the bobsleigh in the famous Cresta Run. His thirst for adventure was primed, and he never returned to his father's hotel. They were looking for Swiss cooks at the Holland America line, and uh, I put in for it. They gave me a job as a chef entremetier. Probably made about 20 some trips across the ocean. In 1949, he immigrated to the U.S. at age 24. He got a job cooking at Rockefeller Center's Rainbow Room. I loved New York, but uh, I wanted to go to a winter place. I, I always worked in winter resorts in, in Switzerland. The Swiss chef Arnold Sen of the Hotel Jerome offered him a job in Aspen. Thus began the first cross-country road trip for a first-time driver in his very first car. He spent the season in Aspen as a pastry chef at the Hotel Jerome. Although he was not yet a citizen, in 1950 he was drafted into the U.S. Army's Cold Weather Training Command, a leftover from the 10th Mountain Division. We talked climbing in the summer, skiing in the winter, in Camp Hale, but it was winter warfare survival for the Rangers. After his two-year stint in the Army, he returned to Aspen and the Jerome. I used to walk past the Red Onion, and I used to go to work at the Jerome. One afternoon, John Seiler, who owned the Onion, came out on the street and asked me, are you interested? I need a cook for the evening dinner. Cooster and Sen bought the Red Onion in 1953. Arnold was still chef at the Jerome, so Werner ran the Onion. Aspen was full of character people, full of it. There were always the old miners who came in. They sat in beer gulch, chatted about old mines in Aspen. The miners in beer gulch were soon displaced by skiers. Business picked up tremendously at the time. We had a skier special at the time for a dollar fifty plus three cents tax. We changed it in the summer to student special. And that took off like a house fire. There were so many people in the bar you couldn't even walk through it. Because it was a hangout of the ski patrol. It was a hangout of the locals. 
The previous owner had featured jazz acts like Billie Holiday, Cal Jader, and Teddy Wilson. Werner continued the tradition, featuring both national and local talent. <laughs> In the early 1950s, Freddie Fisher, exiled from Hollywood, showed up at the Red Onion Bar. Someone recognized Freddie and introduced him to a dubious Werner Kuster. Fisher looked exactly like he called out of a manhole because he, he, he was unkept. After a few drinks, Freddie agreed to play a private concert for Werner in the Red Onion basement. He was laying over a empty beer barrel on the floor, blowing his clarinet. The sound carried up to the bar, and I had more people down in the basement than I had where I had the quartet in the back. So I hired him, you know. Freddie was a very, very great friend of mine. He made wisecracks, he made funny remarks, and people laughed and had fun and everything. And on top of it, the best music you can think of. He blew the hell out of his clarinet. Werner also hired folk groups like the Hustlers and introduced the Twist. With the help of his new partner, Jim Perry, The Onion was Aspen's first disco. The Red Onion boomed in the 60s and 70s. Werner turned out as many as 800 meals a night. And it was the place to be for New Year's dinner. It has been said that Kuster fed anyone who asked. He donated time and food to the hospital benefit, the St. Patrick's Day dinner, the community school, and to the jail when they were low on funds. He also fed the U.S. ski team when they were in town. When they trained in Aspen, they ate at the onion. The Swiss ate at Guido's. The Americans ate in my place and said, Guido, if you can't afford the Swiss, I sure as hell can afford the Americans. And that's how it was. Werner served on the city council and as mayor pro tem. And while there, he helped pave Aspen's streets, fix the water system, brick Aspen's malls, and establish our first sister city. He served on the PNZ and on the State Land Commission, for which he received the Distinguished Coloradan Award from Governor Love. The most proudest I was when Princess Grace and Prince Rainier came for a benefit of the Aspen Music Associates and Danny Kay conducted the orchestra and after the orchestra they had their dinner in the Red Onion. We raised $100,000 for the Music Associates and that's a lot of money in those days and I was very proud of, of having the honor to serve them. Werner Kuster and the Red Onion saw a remarkable time in Aspen history. Having brought with him a vision of European quality, he became an active participant in the metamorphosis from Sleepy Hollow to world class. To this day, Werner Kuster remains a true believer in Aspen.